everyone, and welcome to the Dancing Bear Enlightenment Academy Holistic Transformation Podcast. Today we have a great speaker from all the way from India. His name is Sandeep Nath. He's an inner power coach, the founder of Renewalism, Inner Power, Energy, and Mindfulness. Welcome, Sandeep. Hey, hi. Dr. Beverly, thank you so much for having me here. It's such a pleasure speaking to your folks. Oh, we're happy to have you. Now, today you're going to talk to us about something really important for me anyway. What's your role in saving the planet? That's a question for everyone. So <laughs> what is what is your role? <laughs> <laughs> well, let me ask you a counter question, and I'm asking this to all our viewers and listeners. Do you think we individually have a role to play? Or is it the governments that have to decide things and do things and it's the COP that puts together all climate policy and it's uh, the industry that has to do something about effluents and plastics and it's always somebody else's problem, isn't it? What's our role? And this is where, Beverly, I would take all of us back to a lovely quote which I use, misuse, abuse a lot in the context of renewalism. Mm -hmm. In fact, I have a video at renewalism.com which starts with that. And that's a quote from Mahatma Gandhi who said, be the change you want to see in the world. Mm -hmm. I think that statement deserves a minute. Mm -hmm. Be the change. You know, every alphabet, every word here just a two alphabet word like B is so significant because we are human beings. We're not human doings, but we're so mindlessly caught up with stuff to do this and that. And I got to get this and I got to do that. And I've got to finish this. Then we forget that we have to be somebody first. And the being comes from our inner connection. Mm -hmm. what, what are we all about inside? And is that what we're projecting outwards? Or is it something else is to, you know, like they say, you you do things uh, which you don't like for uh, impressing the people you don't like <laughs> with the money you don't have or something like that, right? Yeah. <laughs> God, in this consumerist trap. <laughs> but what are you? Be the change you want to see in the world. Everybody wants to see change in the world. But, but everybody else has to be the one to change. <laughs> Nobody wants to change. And they don't think that it's for them to change. So that's why this talk, this session, this conversation, this fireside, this very, very interesting uh, today with you can open up some, uh, some, um, some of the hard wiring that our viewers and listeners have about what is their role. And just before I hand it back to you, I'll just set a context here that this line comes from the book Renewal which I just mentioned a moment ago. It's the byline of the book, because if we are to renew the planet, if we are to renew human consciousness, and we'll talk more about that as the session goes, then it is your unexpected role that's gonna make that happen. Mm -hmm. So this is what the book looks like for those of us who can see renewal, your unexpected role in saving the planet. Over to you. Wonderful. So uh, like you, I'm passionate about uh, recycling and, and, you know, doing my little bit. So I love your passion. So how did you get started in this? What, what, what is it that caused you to be so passionate about this? Mm. Great, great way to get to my backstory there. <laughs> so uh, I, I'm based in India, as uh, you familiarized everybody with and in India and the, the the listeners of yours from India would completely resonate with this. Every parent uh, wants their kid to be either an engineer or a doctor. Every other profession is insignificant. So oh. it doesn't exist. I mean, forget about significant. It doesn't exist. You're either an engineer or a doctor. <laughs> so that, that's where my story was started from. You know, I, I became an engineer. And then uh, I had had enough of... Uh, technical knowledge and, uh, you know, enough of studies, let's say. So I decided to take up a job immediately. And then uh, somewhere down the line, 10 years down the job, I decided I must get a management degree because uh, here I am teaching uh, 
management concepts. I used to run a consulting company into brand strategy. So I was teaching at MBA schools. And so I joined the management program at one of the Ivy League uh, institutes in India. And with all of that, two, three years after finishing my MBA, I started feeling a sense of hollowness. I started feeling the belief that I was part of the problem. <laughs> with all this traditional knowledge inside me, I was not getting any solutions for anyone. <laughs> I was consulting, like I said, on uh, brands uh, which were large brands, global multinationals and business process outsourcing, for example, who were having hundreds of thousands of kids working in India overnight to solve problems that ought not to have existed in the first place mm -hmm. if we had designed our systems right. So was that the right thing to do, to have this entire generation working like night owls against the biorhythm? It didn't go with my common sense. Another very large consumer products company was my client. And here I was propagating the health and convenience of eating out of a packet. <laughs> no, 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 there's something wrong in this. Yeah. How can you eat out of a packet? It's so distanced from anything natural. For hundreds of thousands of years, we've been communing with nature. <laughs> and now we are eating something out of a factory and thinking that that's the way to go. What's it going to make us? It's going to make us automatons. And that's pretty much where we are headed already. Mindless creatures, zombies, just yeah. doing what we do, competing against a machine eventually. Mm -hmm. Something's wrong. And that, that was about 15, 17 years ago. But that laid the basis of renewal. Mm -hmm. And uh, it took me to the Himalayas. It took me to studying from uh, various Vedic uh, masters, Tibetan lamas, Chinese, Taoist, and Zen masters. And understanding that we knew it all. Ancient Oriental wisdom has a lot of answers for yeah. the complexities of contemporary business and lifestyle. We just have to tap into it with an open mind, not waiting for scientific proof of those things, mm -hmm. but rather experiencing it and realizing, man, it works for me. Let yeah. science catch up with their measurements. <laughs> you know? So that's, that's the kind of habits that we got to cultivate as renewalists. And as we renew at our mind, body, spirit level, which, uh, is, which is the starting point, self. You know, what you're talking about, uh, recycling and stuff like that is damn good and very important. But unless we've got a handle on our self, be the change you want to see in the world, we're not going to have the influence or the, uh, the capacity to, to bring that change about in anybody else. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, gotta be, it's gotta be a movement over this decade as I see it, yeah. which, which needs a critical mass. And I'm so, so grateful to you, Dr. Beverly, for doing your bit in uh, bringing this message out to so many people. And thank you guys for still listening. <laughs> well, it's really important. Um... So you, you mentioned earlier about the inner power and moving into renewal. So how can people become the role model and be part of that movement? Great, great. So um, starting point would be to have this feeling within that we've got to do something. Uh, it's, it's me. It's me who controls my habits. Now, if I have a simple habit, for example, of carrying a plastic bag with me every time I go out of my house. Impulsively, you and I know that we tend to buy something. And when we do, we are creating the causes for another plastic bag to come into the house and for another plastic bag to actually uh, manifest in the world. Now, if you're 8 billion people in the world, one in thousand, let's say eight million bags we bought every day. That's that that's the kind of enormity of what we're looking at. And just as we never forget to keep our cell phone in our pocket, we, we must, you know, tie a bag with the cell phone and put that in the pocket as well. <laughs> and you just solve the problem of eight million bags. Mm -hmm. So habits. That's where we start. And uh, we, we can go down the road with a few habits, but 
Essentially, uh, what we're talking about is um, having that feeling that we make a difference. We stop eating out of bags. I tell you, all those large consumer product companies will have to find better alternatives to stay in business. And they will. Yeah. If they're just being lazy because we, we're cooperating with them. Yep. So the renewables can easily overthrow the consumerist, you know, and change global economies in every way. And that's what being a renewalist is about. That's what the renewalism movement is about. It's actually just 30 habits which are documented in renewalism. And you can start reading at renewalism.com. Download a copy of the book from there. And uh, it's available at all leading portals as well as on renewalism.com. Get, get a handle on that and then let's talk. Let's form a club. Let's do a podcast. Let's do something that uh, that gets you a little uncomfortable with uh, expanding your circle of influence. Yeah, the stores that I generally shop at don't have bags. You have to bring your own. I, I have these box-like things with handles that I take in. So I, I have two of them. I just fill them up <laughs> so I don't need Make their me. bags. <laughs> yeah. That, that, that's, um, good. that's a good store policy. I mean, they, they may be taking a, a, a conscious stand of doing that, but uh, mm-hmm. if if more follow suit, then the consumers will come in line, right? They will yeah. change yeah. habits. Yep. So what are some of the other habits that we can change? So the way that this book came about, it was not something that I dreamed of. It was challenged to me. I was uh-huh. sitting in Mexico. <laughs> Seriously, this is woo stuff for me. <laughs> because I've been working in the energy space for about 12, 15 years now. And I've been having this thing about uh, renewal uh, for some reason. I didn't have that word till uh, November 2019. And suddenly this word popped into my head, renewal. And I started writing it in my computer because uh, I had this... Uh, patch of time at the end of the year, November 2019 in Mexico. And I just started writing. And uh, the, the first line was about some guy called Shaker who had to renew his insurance policy, which is the way we usually understand the term renewal, right? And so did I. And uh, then it just went on. And for straight 40 days, I was writing and 240 pages were out. And there was a guy called Guru Pranachandra who identified himself in the second or third chapter. And it was actually he who was giving this discourse to Shekhar and his family and 100 mm-hmm. people. And the book is about these, this discourse. And why I had to preface this uh, before I answer the question was because Guru Pranachandra is some divine energy that's told us, you and me, me included, that there are three levels of renewal. There is self-renewal and there are 10 habits in that. And I have absolutely no idea how those, those 10 came about in the first place. It's such a beautiful number, you know. And then I didn't know the next day what I was writing, the next minute, and just happened to have another set of 10 habits in symbiotic renewal, which is about our relationships with others and with the planet and with various things, you know, money and whatever. And then another 10 in systemic renewal, which is... <laughs> <laughs> it is crazy, you know. It's about it's about renewing the systems that have stopped serving us. But we've been so busy to notice that we're just running along with those systems. And it took a COVID three, four months after I wrote this book uh, to tell us that look at the telecommuting system again. And that's one of the the habits that uh, we talk about. Look at online schooling or homeschooling. Yeah. That's another of the habits he asked me to write about. He starts this whole discourse with mindfulness and the whole concept of wearing a mask of, you know, physical distancing and personal hygiene and all that are aspects of mindfulness that are uh, introduced to us, to every one of us who are interdependent on this little planet. Each one of us became mindful about something at least, congruently, at the same time, everybody. Except they weren't mindful about disposing of the masks, and now they're all over the place as clutter and litter. 
You're right. You're right. So that that's exactly what renewables got to do. You know, a uh, 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 very very uh, close friend of mine who is uh, an ornithologist. Actually, he's uh, not an ornithologist. He's a consultant and uh, coach, and um, he loves birds. So he he's the he he's the closest to an ornithologist that I've ever <laughs> got to. He was telling me how he is uh, every time he speaks uh, or consults or uh, anytime he opens his mouth, he makes it a point to take a detour and tell people that those masks have those loops, cut the loops before you dispose them. Yeah. Because he's got photographs of birds who get caught in the garbage dumps and they, they just get caught in those loops. They can't get out of them and they just die because they, they can't move thereafter. You know? oh. It's like a handcuff. For the birds. Oh, it was it's so like important. those plastic things in the oceans that that kill the fish. Yeah. Oh, and, and who, that's who, who, who drinks all the stuff out of the plastic? It's you and me. No, I don't drink out of plastic. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm uh, pulling back here. We, we have two renewables talking to each other, but <laughs> let's represent the community. <laughs> I, I tap things before I buy them. Like I bought some olive oil and I sat there going like this until I found the ones that were in glass. Then I decided which one of those I would buy. I, yeah, if it's in plastic. One time I wanted grapeseed oil. Love you. Only Good. had it in yes. plastic. So I brought it home and I had an empty olive oil bottle. I keep my old bottles and recycle them. So I decanted the grapeseed oil into the old olive oil bottle that I'd cleaned out. And then I... I changed the label so it said grapeseed oil. That's how Adam and I am about plastics and glass. <laughs> it's so nice. So that's what we can do. That's what each one of us can do. Nice. Now, you have a gift for our audience. It's not 10 habits. It's only seven. But tell us about the seven habits to stay energized, be it 10 a.m. <laughs> or 10 p.m. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's that's um, really nice of you to um, bring that out because uh, you know it's part of self renewal, and all these seven that we're going to talk about are uh, um, there. Are, I think just two or three habits uh, as far as renewal goes because they they kind of come together. May not, may not even be two. I haven't really thought about it, but. Why I've chosen these seven to share with you guys is because they can get you into experiencing higher energy, whatever time of the day, at 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., you can stay at peak energy if you just do this. And you will find that by doing this, you will break two barriers. One, you will stop thinking that it's difficult to create a habit because you will do it and you will do it very fast. Mm -hmm. And the second is that you will see the difference that this experiential uh, experience of energy has on you. Uh, so you don't have to you know, wait for uh, maybe Wharton or uh, McKinsey or somebody to tell you that uh, this is okay now. Yes, it will get energized. You will get energized. No, no, you will. You just do it. So what do you do? So the first thing to do is to set an alarm. Because that's an external trigger, right? So when the alarm rings, it asks us to do something. So our, our being changes into doing. Otherwise, we're, we're placidly being in, uh, in whatever state we are, uh, sedentary lives that we lead. We are uh, typing reports or uh, uh, cracking formulas or whatever we're, we are into. But then it tells you that you've got to do something now. And that's, that's the advantage of this alarm. Now, this alarm goes off every hour, every hour. And when it goes off, it's the cue for the second habit. And that is, we just stop doing what we're doing for 30 seconds. It's, it's a, overall, I'm proposing to take a two minute break for this entire set of seven, right? So the first is the alarm going off and the second is taking a 30 second break to be conscious about our breathing. If we are aware, if we are mindful of this life-sustaining activity that we do, we will sustain our lives much better. 
So we breathe in slowly and consciously. We observe our tummy coming out. That's when you know that your lungs are fully full and your diaphragm is pressing the tummy down. And because there's no rib cage in front of the tummy, it comes out. So that's that's the sign that you really filled your lungs because your, your tummy is uh, pressed out. And that's how baby breathes, right? You, you breathe in and the belly rises, breathe out and the belly falls. So breathe in like that and then breathe out. Could do it to a count of five. One, two, three, four, five in, slower. One, two, three, four, five out. And doing that three times is 30 seconds. The third thing is get up and refill your glass of water. Because breathing air is one thing and water hydration is the other thing that sustains us. And I would recommend if you do that, then through the hour, you keep sipping the glass. So it finishes and then you refill it. So that, that's, that's another thing Gandhi said, very, very interestingly, he put it. He said, uh, drink food, chew water, which means you, you pulp your food so well in your teeth with your saliva that it goes down like a drink. And you chew water means you keep taking it time and again. You don't glug, 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 drink a glass down. So it's very, very uh, beautifully put there. And uh, so you chew water through the hour and then you go refill your glass. And number four, while you're going to refill your glass, you stretch, you bend, you twist, you do something that, uh, that moves the body physically. Because that little, that little pattern interrupt is what is going to, um, going to change things inside for you. Yeah. The, the body uh, keep, keeps... Uh, uh, active in a sense. So you don't have to go for that five kilometer walk. You don't have to do that 30 minute meditation. No, you're doing the 30 second meditation 10 times a day, maybe. So that's five minutes all to it, <laughs> you know? And that's more than enough because you're recharging every hour. And it's it's like uh, if, if you recharge every hour, you don't discharge ever. Uh, you stay connected. Exactly. And talking of staying connected, the fifth thing that you do is you smile at somebody on your way back. And if you don't have anybody to smile to, you're working from home or whatever, you go to the mirror and smile at yourself. You're a buddy, you know, and you buddy yourself. <laughs> so <clears throat> do that. And uh, the thing is that in this, in this little break, we are creating the body, mind, and spirit conditions to to change ourselves. And in doing so, we are also creating the habits, the mindfulness of habits, which will serve us to create other habits equally mindfully. So it, it's not just that we're doing this, but as a consequence of doing this, we are telling our inside that I can change. And we're telling our inside that there are other things that we can do, like you said, we can be more mindful about where we throw stuff, masks included, and stuff like that. So it's only because we're taking those breaks that we are having the, uh, the, the, the habit of awareness of mm -hmm. what it is that uh, is really going to serve us. Mm -hmm. that's so that, really that's how that goes. <laughs> that's a nice thing to do. I like that. <laughs> a nice little series of, of things. Um, that's really wonderful. So for those of you on YouTube, I'm going to have the link down below. And for those of you listening to the podcast, you go to inner power with Sandeep, S-A-N-D-E-E-P dot com forward slash 10 to 10, T-E-N-T-O-T-E-N. -E -E so inner power with Sandeep dot com forward slash 10 to 10. Wonderful gift. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so glad you asked. And it's it's something that is easy to start with because it's an alarm that pushes you into it. And you, you just do that and see the results. And then we talk about what to do next. Pick up the book as well while you're at it. Yeah, nice. And uh, do you have any closing remarks for the audience? Well, 
this recording is early in this year. I'm not sure uh, how soon it's going to be uh, what you hear, maybe a year later, two years later. But what I want to say is that many of us tend to think that the new year, we're going to do new stuff. So I could wish you a happy new year. But don't limit yourself by that idea. Every day is a new day. And if you think that every day you can do something new, every minute you can do something new, you're going to be discarding so much of baggage, so much of clutter, so much of your own concepts and ideas that hold you back. You can be renewing each and every minute. Your cells do, scientifically proven. How about doing it in your mind as well? So happy new year, happy new day, and happy new minute as well. Well, thank you, Cindy, for being our guest and wonderful messages for everyone. And remember everyone to be the light you want to see in the world.